Hey everyone, welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. For this video, I want to talk to you about connecting a amplifier to your either your home theater receiver or your integrated amp or your stereo receiver or you know whatever you want to call these things these days. So on the left here, I have a amplifier. Okay, this is strictly a amp. Now this is the Parasound. Parasound. Let me let me re say that. <laughs> this is the Parasound. 2125V2, it's 150 watts per channel into 8 ohms. The reason for purchasing something like this, if you already own a home theater receiver or a stereo receiver or an integrated amp or you know whatever you want to call it, is to give your speakers more power and to make them sound more like how they should. So typically with receivers on the higher end, you know, 150, 140 watts is pushing the higher end. You know, 120 is, is really good, but even still, potentially the power, you know, it, it's, it's not enough. So what you do is you purchase an amplifier and you just add it on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some ways to connect it and I'm also going to show you the 12 volt trigger, okay? This particular amplifier has many uses, okay? This amplifier probably has some of the most that you'll find on most amps out there. It's very flexible, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through some of the features and what they do, and then we're going to hook it up. So we're going to hook it up to the NADC 388 integrated amplifier, uh, stereo amplifier, it's only two channels, so. Or you want to call it maybe stereo receiver because I added these HDMIs in there, it doesn't come with the HDMIs, but if it did have HDMIs, then it's definitely a stereo receiver. Okay, so the first thing, I'm actually gonna zoom this camera in. Over here on the left, this amplifier has a setting, there's a switch where it says normal, it says 12 volt, it says quiet, and it says louder at the top, okay? These are your turn on options. Now, with manual, there's a button in front, which is a power button. It's pretty self-explanatory. Press the power button, turns it on. Press the power button again to turn it off, okay? With the 12 volt trigger, we're gonna be hooking it up using this cable. Now, quiet and louder is for this input jack right here, okay? Quiet is going to be um, higher in sensitivity, okay? Now, always check your user manual before you connect anything because it's just, it's so important. Check your user manual so you have an understanding of, of how your amplifier works and how to connect it. This guide is just a very general guide. So with it set to quiet or with it set to louder, it's sensing the volume, okay? So it's, it's like a subwoofer then. It's gonna turn on and off like a subwoofer. When it's set to quiet, lower sounds are going to trigger it. When it's set to louder, louder volumes on whatever you're watching or listening to is going to trigger it to turn it on, okay? So when I hook this up, I hook this up and set it, I flip the switch and set it to I set it to quiet. I, obviously, I can't flip the switch with these gloves on, but I set it to quiet, okay? So, over here you have your 12 volt input, okay? And this is your 12 volt output, okay? So, the 12 volt input is going to be coming in from the output of a receiver, okay? And then what they call the loop here, this is your output, okay? So this is going to be going to another amplifier. So let's just say we had another one and we want to stack it with this. We would send it, we would connect another one of these, and then we would connect it to that amplifier so it turns it on. But over here we have inputs and we have outputs, okay? So these outputs can also be connected to another amplifier. So if you had another one of these or a different brand of amp, you could connect it to that and it would just send the same signal that this received 
over to the other um, amp. Now, most, um, most amplifiers have like this little like volume type of knob thing over here, and you could just turn the knob up and down, and that's really to just make these either um, more sensitive or less sensitive, so you're kind of like controlling the input volume, or the gain, or whatever you want to call it. Now over here we have a high pass filter, okay, so on, excuse me, so it has off, and then it has 20 hertz, and it has 40 hertz. So what this switch is doing is it's cutting out the low frequencies. So if you want to filter out frequencies that are below 20 hertz, you set it to 20. If you want to filter out frequencies that, that are below 40 hertz, set it to 40. Um, over here, this is for the bridged mode, whether it's stereo or mono, okay? So... So that's important. So that's your bridge mode, that's your stereo or mono. Um, you know, mono would be if you're only gonna connect this to one speaker, you know, you would set it to mono. So here's your, here's your inputs for, for speaker set A, and here's your inputs for speaker set B. Over here, we have the impedance for the speakers. So in this case, we're using four to eight ohm speakers. The switch has to be set to the left. And on the, excuse me, on the right, the switch has to be set to the right. And the switch part to the left is for two to three ohm speakers. This manufacturer also said if you want your amp to run cooler, to set it to two to three ohms. I know that there's, um, I know that there's a lot of uh, debate about whether to actually use a switch like this or to just leave it to the four to eight ohms. In this case, with this amp um, and the speakers that I use, they're all um, eight ohm speakers, so I'm perfectly fine with it set over there. Um, let's see, what else do we have back here? I think that's pretty much it. I think I covered it well. So that's the back. That's the back of this amplifier. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this up. So let's just say that this is the unit that we're going to be playing music through, okay? We're going to be playing music through this. So in this case, this is the preamp output. So we're going right here. And we're going to connect it like this. Now, if, if this was in the back of a home theater receiver, you would see if, if your home theater receiver has it. So let me put it to you that way because a lot of them don't, especially when you're in like the sub... $700 price range usually, like they're pretty hard to find. Um, it becomes more common as it gets more expensive. But it might say um, preamp uh, center channel, preamp left right channel, the preamp out for your surround backs, your height channels, whatever it may be. You're going to pick the speakers that you want to power, okay, and connect them to an amp. So in this case, we're going to go from here for our left and right speakers, and we're going to go right over to here, okay? And that's it. Now what we want to do with this amp is we want to set it to either quiet or louder. So we're just going to flip the switch over to, get it right there, to quiet. Once that's on quiet, when this turns on and, it's, and it starts playing music, then this amp is going to turn on and then it's also going to turn off when it senses that this amp has either turned off or it hasn't been playing any music or movies or whatever for um, a few minutes. I forget you know, how, how much time it is. It might be like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, but then it's going to um, shut off by itself. So that's one way to connect an amplifier to your home theater receiver or your integrated stereo amplifier or whatever the names are for it. So let's just do this another way now. We're going to add in, actually don't I have it already? Yes I do. I have one. So this is a this is a 12 volt trigger cable and it looks different than a standard headphone jack. Okay. So just take a look at that. And this is mono, and this one is, happens to be three and a half millimeter. So let's just say 
that we want to use the 12 volt to turn it on and off. So we go over here, right? So we flip the switch. Now this one's set to 12 volt. Anytime that you make connections like this, always pull the plug, <laughs> you know, so it doesn't turn on while you're doing it or, you know, make some crazy exploding sound through the speakers. So let's now hook up the 12 volt trigger. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go from the output, which is right here, it says out. So that's the output from our receiver or our stereo receiver or stereo integrated amp or whatever it may be, or even if it's another amp or even if it's another amp uh, amplifier. And we're going to run this cable all the way over here and we're going to go to the 12 volt input. Okay. So now what we have is anytime, we got this one, it's a big cable that I have too, it's long. Um, anytime that this turns on, this receiver, amplifier, whatever you want to call it, turns on, it's going to send a signal over here to your amp and it's going to turn it on. And then when this turns off, it's going to turn this off as well. So let's just say now if you own another amp, Okay, you want to connect another amp and you want to make sure that amp turns on and off as well. Well, this is what we do. We have a second one of these cables, the, the trigger cable, and we're going to come over here to the amplifier this time and we're just going to hook up one to the out. And now this will go to another amplifier if we had one. And then this would turn on that amplifier and turn off that amplifier and this would be turned off. So when this turns, so when this amp turns on and off, it's going to shoot the signal here to here and everything is easy going to turn on and off. And, and hopefully that makes sense because, um, you know, it, it can be confusing, but that's the, pretty much the way that, that you're going to connect every amplifier to a home theater receiver. The only thing is that a lot of amplifiers might not have this type of a um, uh, switch over here where it senses the power coming in through the left and right input and output. So you would definitely have to use this type of a cable, the uh, trigger cable. That's, that's the only, um, you know, that's the only real difference that that makes this particular amplifier kind of special is all of these, um, you know, additional features that this amp has.